Good morning, Valencia County Cowboy Church. I pray everybody out there is healthy and, and safe this morning. I'm excited for the message God's given me this morning. And I just uh, praise God for another day. I pray y'all are doing good. I don't have my phone to see who's jumping on, but we're glad to have you. We're going to wait a little bit. Denise is going to let me know whenever... whenever uh, 10 o'clock gets here. I want to tell you, though, a little secret I'm going to talk about at the end of my message. We are going to go back to church next Sunday. I'm excited for that. We're going to have church. We're going to start back up next Sunday, the 10th, and we are going to have two services. We're going to have one at 9 o'clock and one at 11 o'clock. The first Sunday, we're not going to have any Bible study. We're going to see what happens and we're going to try to work in the Bible study with everything, and we'll see how it goes. We're excited to come back together. We had an awesome Christmas Eve service, and I, I was so blessed to be a part of that. And it, and I thank all of y'all for that came and was a part of it, that watched it. Uh, God moved in a mighty way. I tell you, it opens our eyes to to that, you know, we're not the only ones that's been through what we're going through. There's been our forefathers that's been through a lot worse than we're going through, yeah, but it's time for us to 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 man up and to girl up and to cowboy up and tighten the cinch up and, and tighten that back cinch up a little tighter and get ready to rope. It's time to, to stand and be who God's called us to be, and I'm excited for that. You know, we don't have to go out and find something to start complaining about, but we have got to get where we're going to stand for the truth. When God opens an occasion for us as Christians to stand up and and be the light and be the truth, we need to do it. You know, me and Denise have been talking about this last week and, and all the weeks that we've been here at the ranch. It's just unreal, the darkness that's everywhere, huh, Denise? It's tough i'm telling you it, it's like what is going on and it's just getting worse i'm going to talk about that this morning but before we start this message this morning i would like to ask all of y'all is it 10 o'clock yet denise oh it's not 10 o'clock so we're going to keep talking that's what we're going to do we're excited though I, it is a it's a great day thank you jesus I, i'm excited my message this morning is on the the sore uh, of planting seed and, and the ground that we sow seed in, that God sows seed in. And I and I think it's appropriate for the first Sunday in this new year to talk about who he calls us to be. And are, is the seed that he's planting, is it going to rocky ground? Is it going to the path? Is it going to fertile ground? Where is that seed going that God's putting in us? I, I pray that it's going to... to the ground that is fertile and it's deep and it's lush and, and we're going to grow in it. Before we get started though, let's go to the Lord in prayer. If you would, grab someone's hand next to you and let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, Father God, we just thank you again for this morning. We thank you for uh, the honor to come and to praise you and to worship you and to learn more about you, Father God. And Father, I just ask that you would be with us me and Denise here, and that, that you would open our hearts, and that you would open those out there that's watching, open their hearts and minds and souls, and, and Father God, that we would hear what you'd have for us today, that we would let the world around us just slip away, Father, and that we would truly seek where we are in our walk with Christ, and where we need to be, Father God. What ground are we, Father? We are that ground. We are the soil that you plant your seed in, and are we the soil that you call us to be, Father God? Father, I lift up those that are in need of prayer this morning. I thank you for their lives. And I just ask you to be with, with those that need that prayer this morning. I ask you to be with Susan Gonzalez and her family this morning, Father God. And just give them a comfort and peace and hold them tight, Father God, through this loss of her father. And Father, I lift up Jimbo and Heather and their family this morning. I ask you to be with Jimbo. Give him the strength to endure this time that he's having to feel, feel, spend in the hospital, Father God. Use him as a mighty light there in that hospital to bring your word and to show others your love, Father God. And I ask you to be with Heather and the kids and the grandkids. Give them that peace and comfort. And Father, to those that are 
the others out there in, in our in our viewing this morning and in the world around us, our family. Father God, be with them, whether they, they need healing this morning, whether it's physical or spiritual or mentally, Father God. We ask you to heal them, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We praise you. I ask you to hide me behind the cross this morning. And Father, I pray you will speak through me, Father God, that I will speak the truth that your people need to hear this morning, Father God, in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. Thank you, Jesus. You know, uh, before we get started, I want to read some scripture to you. And the, and the scripture is the parable of the sower. And, I, and if you have your Bibles, I pray you'll turn with me to Luke 8. And I'm going to start at verse 4. Luke 8, verse 4. And I'm going to go all the way down through 8 to start with here. The parable of the sower. And I pray that you truly understand what I'm trying to say, what God's trying to get across this morning. I was talking to Denise this morning, and I said, you know, it's tough. It is so tough being a pastor, and, and, and it's tough even living in the world we're living in. All of us are going through chaotic, but I tell you, the, the, the greatest thing that can happen is if our church is all lined up together and we have a same mind and we are who God's called us to be. Are we that soil that God is planting his seed in that has love, number one, love. We talked about love last week up there in the mountains. That love is so vital. Do we have peace and comfort and patience for one another in our church? I'll tell you, it's, it can be so hectic being a leader in a church, an elder, a Sunday school teacher. If you're involved in a church, the, the praise and worship brand, I'll tell you, there's always someone poking you. You're not doing enough. And I'm telling you, I pray that we get to where we can love one another and we can just persevere and, and, and that we will show the world around us what it is to be a Christian. So I'm going to get off my soapbox and I, we're going to start in Luke 8, verse 4, if you turn with me there. It says, while a crowd was gathering... And people were coming to Jesus from town after town. He told this parable. And it goes like this. It says a farmer went out to sow his seed. And as, as, as he scattering the seed, some fell along the path. It was trampled on and the birds ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground. And when it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture. Other seeds fell among thorns, which grew up with it and choked the plants. Still other seeds fell on good soil. It came up and yielded a crop a hundred times more than was sown. When he said this, he called out, Whosoever has ears to hear, let them hear. His disciple asked him what this parable me meant. I'm going to stop right there at verse 9. I went a little too far. But some of you may be familiar with this passage, a scripture I just read. It's called the parable of the sower. And, and I believe this scripture applies to all of us as a Christian today. You know, we want, to all, we want to say, well, God's talking to the world around us. But God's talking to you and me this morning in this parable. You see, our churches are full of these kinds of people. And it is a good way to gauge where your heart and soul is by comparing ourselves with these four types of people. Jesus was asked to explain this parable and often even his own disciples didn't have a clue as to what he was talking about. I, I tell you, remember he told his disciples several times that he would be killed and he would resurrect from the grave and it came as a complete shock to them whenever it happened. Aren't you glad that, that me and you have the word of God, the written word of God, the Bible with us so that we can we can get the absolutely clear, clear truth that he can show us and guide us and direct us in our life today? Wow, those disciples didn't have this Bible. So that there is, there's no question, there's no guesswork to what God wants us to be 
and do as Christians. There's no guesswork. Yes, the mystery has been revealed. And praise God, he revealed it in his word. It just gives me cold chills. Let, let's look at Jesus' answer when his disciples wanted to, to wanted an answer to the scripture I just read. And I'm going to read from verse 9, Luke 8, 9 through 15, if you would join me. It says, And when he said this, he yelled out, Whosoever has ears to hear, let them hear. Now this is verse 9. His disciples asked him, what this parable meant. And he said, The knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God has been given to you, but to others I speak in parables, so that though seeing, they may not see, though hearing, they may not understand it. This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. Those along the path are the ones who hear, and then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved. And those on the rocky ground are the ones who receive the word with joy when they hear it, but they have no root. And they believe for a while, but in the time of testing they fall away. The seed that fell among thorns stands for those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by life's worries, riches, and pleasures, and they do not mature. But the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering, produce a crop. Wow, that is powerful to me this morning. I need to read that every morning, Denise, because I need to make sure that my ground that God keeps sowing seed in is the good ground. The good ground. Here we have four kinds of people that Jesus is talking about. And the four kinds that... That, that we will talk about this morning are these four. And this morning, each one of us need to figure out what category we fit in in our life today. You see, we need to be honest with ourselves. You know, it's funny, all this corruption and all the junk going on around us and all these people that are doing things behind the back and, and doing dishonesty and all this stuff and they think they're getting away with it. Nobody knows what they're doing and uh, it's crazy. I'm telling you, I don't care what they do or what me and you do, God knows the truth. He watches us every minute, every second. He knows what me and you think and he knows what we do. He knows why we do it. And, and we can't get away with it. We live in a world of smoke and, and images that's not real. You know, first we need to come to understand one thing about this scripture before we go any farther. And that is that the seed that he's talking about is the word of God. We just read that. Yes, the word of God. It is absolutely essential that me and you understand that the Bible is our life instruction manual. Not somebody's book, not some, <laughs> some philosopher, some teacher or whatever. Our essential, absolute life instruction comes from this Bible right here. And, and if it doesn't come to yours, you need to really start praying about it. And we as Christians must stand only on the Word of God to live our lives. We cannot figure out anything without this inspired Word that comes straight from God Himself. That's what the Word of God says. So we all realize that the seed that is being sowed in the Word of God right here is the Word of God, right? We all understand that. And when you go to church or listen on live stream like we're doing this morning, what a pastor does is plant the seed. So I'm here this morning being a person that's trying to plant the seed of God to you. 
And it's so important to me. The word of God within your heart. You have to understand this. I can't tell you how important this is. This is why you must have a pastor or a minister that preaches God's word. All of it, not just part of it. And if a preacher is using any other book, I'm telling you, any other book than the Bible to base his sermon on, then you need to find another church where the word of God is taught completely. I'm not saying that it's wrong to read another book. I, God knows that I have a lot of books that I've read in my life, Christian books that I've, I've attained things God showed me through them. But every book I've ever read from somebody else was their philosophy and their take on what this Bible says. And God can show me what I need to know about this Bible. There's a lot of good, helpful books out there that are written by Christian authors. What I'm, what I'm saying is that the Bible is literally the only inspired word of God. There's nothing else. There are other Christian books that may indeed be very good books, and I promise you there is, but they are not good enough for me to preach out of. And if I ever do, I hope and pray that the elders of this church would call me out on it. The Bible, the Word of God, is taught here at Valencia County Cowboy Church, and nothing else will ever be taught long as I'm a pastor here, and, and as long as the elders that are in our church and leaders in our church are here, this is what we live for, is what we breathe and eat and sleep, is to learn the Word of God. By the way, we also see why Jesus taught in parables here, don't we? He tells us in verse 10, though seeing, they may not see. Though hearing, they may not understand. This is one of the places that helps me realize that Jesus wasn't just talking about unsaved people here, but he was talking about Christians as well. He was talking about me and you. Paul said that the word of God is foolishness to the non-believers. So that means that Jesus expected us believers to know and understand this parable. The first type of person that we read about in this parable is, is the seed on the path. The seed that was planted on the path. You see, that person knows that there is a right way. He, he even knows the path but he chooses not to take it. He is the one who hears, but chooses to reject, reject the word of God. In fact, the word even goes on to say that it is the devil who comes and takes the word from them. You see, these are those that come to church, listen to the word, and then they go on living like they had never heard it. Wow, did you know that churches are full of these kind of people? Wow, I know you're probably saying, Brother James, I just don't see it. Well, I promise you, they are. It's sad to say, but many people can come and listen to a message and hear the Word of God and never be affected by it. I've been in the ministry for over 23, 24, 25 years now, and I've seen it over and over. They come to church, man, They and when they're in church, they are the spitting image of who God calls them to be. But when they leave church and they go back to the world, they are back of the world, and they're in the world, and they don't take this with them. You know, they may even come on a regular basis. Remember what Peter said? Be ye doers of the word, not Hears only. That's what Peter warned us about. Everything that we need to know and be warned about has been told us. And then Jesus goes on to say that these type of people won't even be saved. We just read it. it wow, that breaks my heart. You see, they are blinded by the enemy to the truth. Me and Denise have been talking about this this past week. I am blown away of how how Satan 
is is it, we are living in a time where Satan doesn't even hide anymore and the world still can't see him. Can you believe that? It just breaks my heart. I, I want to share a little scripture here. I want to, to get to warn you. I, I'm here to warn you and teach you the truth this morning because time is short. I know my time's short, even if Jesus don't come till after I'm dead. My time here is short. I'm not promised tomorrow. And guess what? You're not either. And you need to know the truth. And you need to live for the truth. And you need to be the, the one that receives this. You need to be the fertile ground that the seed is planted in. And your life needs to resemble that 24-7, not just when it fits your life. In 1 Peter 5, 8, and 9, I want to read this to you. Matter of fact, I'm going to read more than that this morning. I, I, I just feel led to read uh, 1 Peter 1, 1 Peter 5, I mean. 1 Peter 5, 1 through, I'm going to go plumb to 9. This is what it says. To the elders among you, I appeal as a fellow elder with a witness of Christ's sufferings who also will share in the glory to be revealed. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, watching over them, not because you must, but because you are willing as God wants you to be, not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve, not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being an example to the flock. Wow, that's who we need to be. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. Wow, I want that crown of glory that never fades away. I, I promise you, that's the goal in my life. And it ought to be the goal in your life. Not how much money you have or how good you can rope or how fast you can drive or how... And it list goes on and on. But to receive that glory, to receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. Wow, I can't even fathom that. And it goes on to verse 5. It says, In the same way, you who are young, submit yourselves to your elders. That's, that's. I mean, I see that not happening in the world today. The young people are just going crazy, and they don't respect their elders. They don't respect anybody. And, and, and if they don't respect their mom and dad or the elders, how are they ever going to respect God? They're not. It's something that had to be taught to me at a young age, and it's something that had to be taught to you at a young age. And guess what? That hasn't stopped. I don't care what the world says. We have to teach our young people to respect the elders. All of you clothe yourselves with humility toward one another because God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. I'll tell you what, you, a humble man or woman is after my own heart. I, I just love them. I, I, just, I just go, well, praise God for that person. It goes on to say in verse 6, Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. We're living in a time when their anxiety is rampant. And if you sit there and tell me you don't have any anxiety in your life and family, I, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to disagree with you because just the world around you causes that. And then it goes on to say in verse 8, this is something I want you to hear this morning. If you hear this, please hear this. Be alert and of sober mind. That sober mind hits me hard as a brick. I mean, it's a sober mind that's not altered by nothing. It, alcohol can't alter it. I, if I if I go drink, I'm altering my mind and I'm not sober. I do things I shouldn't do. I see things that I shouldn't see. I, I need to have a sober. It says be alert in these times right now. He, he, God's trying to tell you something this morning. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. He does. I, I, you may not know you have an enemy this morning, but you do, and it's the devil. And, and if you give in to him, he will eat you alive. I mean it. But if you seek God with your heart and you live a Christian life and you are who you claim to be, a Christian, you are protected. It says, resist him, standing firm in the faith, 
Because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of suffering. Wow, that's powerful to me. That, that resist him. It's something that we have a choice to do. God's not saying that, hey, I'm going to keep him off of you. No, God's saying, James, you need to resist the devil. You need to not be a part of his little game, not a part of his world, not a part of the junk going on around you. You resist him. And then he goes on, he tells me, James Robbins, Pastor James, you stand firm in the faith. Don't waver. Man, I don't care if they start shooting at me. I'm standing in this faith. I'm going to stand firm. I, if the world thinks I'm crazy, I'm going to stand. If my good friends that I've buddied with and roped with all my life and hunted with and done everything, they think I'm crazy and what I'm doing and standing firm in the faith, then so be it. I'm not here to please nobody but God. Wow. That's pretty powerful to me. That is something else. I, I pray that, that y'all understand that, that, that you do have somebody after you and they're after your kids and they're after your family. And they're all he's all around us. The enemy, the little demons are everywhere. But if we'll stand firm in the faith, and seek God, and be who he calls us to be, and live the word of God, we are okay. We are okay. I got to get back to these, these sowing seeds. Then, then there are the seeds that fell on the rocks. Well, Jesus says that these are the kind of believers that have no root. It says in verse 13, those on the rocky soil are the ones who receive the word with joy. Mind you, joy. And when they hear it, but they have no root. They believe for a while, but in the time of testing, they fall away. I ask you this morning, do you know someone like that? Have you ever been like that? That you had that joy and you was walking that walk and then you fell away, you tripped. I know that in my 63 years, I've drifted away a few times. You see, I had no root or I wasn't planting the seed. I wasn't putting the, the fertilizer and the ground around it. It was rocky where I was. I was eager to sit God, but I didn't stay in church and follow the word like I should have. I let something get in the way. I didn't like what the pastor said. I thought he was stepping on my toes. I've been there. I've been there. I've left churches that, and when me and Denise were in the secular world and doing our thing, I've left churches and said, I'm not going back because he knows my, he knows me like a book. I can't believe he keeps talking about me. I think somebody's telling. I'd even tell Denise, what are you doing? Talk to him daily to try to get me in trouble or what? <laughs> I tell you, I was eager, eager to set God, but I didn't stay in church and follow the word like I should have. I went and lived my life some other way during the week. I didn't have any growth. I didn't. Do you know where a plant starts growing first? The first thing that starts growing, it's the root. And that root must have nourishment to gain a solid rigid foundation for the plant that is to come. The green part that comes out of the ground. The part that makes the beautiful flowers. Yes, they believed for a while, but since they were not firmly rooted, they all blew away. We've seen it too many times, haven't we? As soon as a storm comes, Something that God wants you to get through by trusting him in order to transform you into what he has in store for you. People give up. They say, wow, I thought that being a Christian was easy. I, wouldn't have, I thought I wouldn't have any problems. Man, I, I, don't, I don't know about this Christian thing. I think I want to go do this on my own. I was doing better when I was on my own. And so they go on their own once again. Whenever all God wanted was for them to trust him. I ask you this morning, I know you're going through storms. Are you trusting God through them storms? 
Are you where you were eight or nine months ago when your walk was Christ? You see, we have to nurture the roots so we can become that beautiful flower that comes up from the roots. Wow. Where are you this morning? God said, I will protect you. I will comfort you. I'll feed you. He'll take care of us if we'll trust him with our life. With our life. I don't know about you, but my life, my heartbeat that's inside of me right now, this pounding, is all I got. It's mine. And how I breathe and how I take care of it and how I let him be a part of that and live in my heart is what makes me who I am. Now the third type that I want to look at this morning, the third seed that fell among thorns. Wow. What do you suppose Jesus meant by that? Thorns. He says in verse 13 that these are people who hear and maybe they even understand but as they go on their way, they are choked by life's worries, life's riches, and pleasures, and they do not mature. Wow. Think about that. You know, we have a lot going on in our lives today, don't we? Me and Denise are guilty of that. We even made up a word for our, our, our own new language, English language, to to talk about how busy we are these days. You know what it is, multitasking. Well, that isn't even a word whenever I was growing up. I never heard about that, but man, that's what I hear, multitasking. I mean, we're so busy. It blows me away. So busy. Yes, too busy for God and his word so we, so we don't mature. We don't mature. These are Jesus' own words. I'm trying to show you this morning. I pray you don't get unhappy at me for preaching the Bible and, and not some other book that may tell you it's okay if you're too busy to spend time with God and His Word. You cannot and will not grow or mature in the Lord until you take the time to do it. This, this thing called Christianity is a choice. And so many people complain about other people keeping them from being who they are and when it's really their choice. Nobody can take you from Christianity. Nobody can take that away from you. You see, you will not and you cannot mature in the Lord until you take the time to study and learn. And I will promise you this, if you will take and make time for God every day, he will increase your time. Somewhere, somehow, some way, I don't know how he does it, but he does it. He does it in my life, in the day, so that you can get everything done that you need to get done. And then he'll give you more time. After all, he even stopped the sun one time, didn't he? I mean, it didn't shine. That's the God you serve and I serve. Are you letting yourself be choked by any of these three things that Jesus mentions in the scripture I just word, read you about the choking out of things? Life's worries? Well, are you worried? Worry all you can, but in the end, what you can do about the things you worry about is pray. And God right there with you. Trust him. It's going to be okay. And how about those riches? All the stuff around you. All the money and all the prestige. The Bible says in Mark 8, 36, this is what it says, not Brother James. It says, for what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Wow. I, I tell you, breaks my heart. I see that happening everywhere. I see it happening in Las Lunas. I see it happening in Santa Rosa, San Juan, Tutankari, Albuquerque. It's happening all around us. It's happening in your life too, probably. I know me and Denise have to watch it. 
there used to be a saying for people who worked all the time and never enjoyed life. It went like this. You'll never be the richest man in the graveyard. <laughs> That's pretty absurd, ain't it? The only thing you will take out of this world is your soul. And believe me, you, it will go somewhere. And someday you'll be thanking Brother James for speaking the truth. Or someday, I promise you, you'll be saying, I wish I would have listened to Brother James. He was trying to show me the truth. He was trying to teach me. And I wanted to live for the world. Store up your treasures in heaven. That's where you're going to be for eternity. If you quit neglecting your spiritual life, for this worldly one that we live in. And how about pleasures? Do you stay away from church in order to participate in, in worldly things? Do you let worldly things get in the way of, of sitting down with your children and studying the Word of God? Or being a part of a body of Christ on Sunday morning? Even though we're not in the church this morning, I know who's watching and who isn't because I have that capability on my phone. And it breaks my heart that we still aren't coming together watching the service and, and praying for each other together. I, it, it's unreal what's going on. Stay up too long. Did you stay up too long Saturday night? You can't get to church on Sunday morning. or uh, What about them roping jackpots or the ropings for your, for your kids that keep you out of church and keeps you away from of serving God and learning more about God? I know when our kids were roping or Denise and I were roping, we would make sure that, that there was a Sunday service where we were going and to rope. And if there wasn't, we had, our, we had one ourselves. You see, we were the church wherever we went. But so many people are afraid what somebody will say. And so many people claim to be Christians when it's not a big deal to them not to have church. You know, I don't mean you have to, to be here at this church every Sunday morning, but wherever you are, you need to study God's Word and be the church to others. That's what this is about. Breaks my heart. I've been to these ropings. I've been to these rodeos. I've been to a lot of stuff. And it looks like it's turning back the other way. I've seen God moving in a mighty way. And then I watched the NFR this last year, and I was so broken hearted. Corey Sullivan, he's my hero. I know him personally. I've been able to talk to him quite a few times and share Jesus. He stood for Jesus up there, but very few did. I also realized we haven't had a, a few Sundays, hadn't had church in a few Sundays, but we're going to fix that. We're going to get cranked back up this next Sunday, and I'm so excited for that to happen. I pray you don't let the world keep you from having church and maturing and growing in God. Nothing is more important. Nothing. You'll never change unless you want to change. And finally, but not least, the seed that fell on good soil. I like the way the Bible puts it. The seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering, produce a crop. I ask you this morning, don't you want to be noble? I don't know about you, but I kind of like that word noble. <laughs> I do. You hear the word and, and you retain the word. That's how you do it. You hear the word, you retain it. You hunger for it, you thirst for it. It's part of your life. It should be number one thing in your life. As an extra plus, our text this morning says that by doing that, we will produce a crop. A hundredfold. You know, when I get to heaven and stand in front of Jesus, I would like for him to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. You produced a good crop. Don't you want to produce a good crop? 
I want you to be honest with me this morning. Where are you in your walk with Christ? Do you truly hunger for him? Is your soil nourished good soil? Is it fertilized? Is it good soil where seed can grow? The Bible also says that those vines that don't produce will be cut off and thrown in the fire. Well, I bring you good news this morning. Jesus loves you. And God has a plan for your life. But I bring you bad news that if you don't persevere and seek him with all you are, and if you don't strive to hunger and thirst for his word in your life and grow continually growing, you're not going to make it. It is so valuable to know that. I didn't know that. Today, I, I fear not going to heaven. I shouldn't. I fear God. But my greatest fear is to stumble somebody or not be who God's called me to be. Even as a pastor, I see so many pastors today. I watch them on TV. I see them on Facebook. And what they're doing, a lot of them doesn't even line up with the Word of God. They don't. But they use God as a crutch to get where they are. It's going on all around us. You know, the I had somebody tell me the other day that they were tired of all the deceitfulness and all the bad stuff and they don't know who to believe. And I mean, it's out there. You just, it's out there. And I, I got to thinking about that and praying about that. Without the Holy Spirit in us, without you asking the Holy Spirit to come in you and live in you, you are like a wave being thrown two and four, two and four. Like a yo-yo, up and down, up and down. But when that Holy Spirit truly comes and it's in you and you focus on it completely, man, there's no greater feeling. You, 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 like you can walk on dry ground across the ocean. God just parts it like he did the Red Sea. I pray you persevere and that you become fertile ground so that the seed God plants in you will grow and produce a hundredfold. In Jesus' name, amen. Whew. Praise God. I want to share with you a little bit before we go that we are going to have church next Sunday. And we decided we're going to have two services. We're going to start the first service at 9, and then we're going to have the second service at 11. There will be no Bible study the first Sunday. We're going to see how it works and how we can work a Bible study into it, and it worked for everybody. And, and we are going to expect everybody to wear a mask uh, we have to protect people. We have to protect our flock. It's what they're asking us to do. It may not prevent 100% of not being sick, but I promise you, it does better with that mask than not having it at all. So we are going to do that. We're going to we're going to set apart. We're going to see how many people come to the first service and say, I pray we... We are full of both services. I pray that you are hungry and that you want that soil to be fertile in your life. We're still going to live stream, so those that can't come to church, if you're sick, if you got a runny nose, if you're coughing, if you're sneezing, please stay home. We had our Christmas service, New Year's, I mean, our, our new Christmas Eve service the other night, and I'm up there. We got the lights out, and we're, we're talking and praying, and I could hear people sneezing and runny noses. And all kinds. I'm saying, God, protect us. I don't know who protect everybody. I mean, we have to be healthy. I know that there's people that, that carry this thing or have it, don't even know they have it, but let's try our hardest 
to stay healthy and make sure our body stays healthy because it is a serious deal. I tell you, there's been people that have lost loved ones. Susan Gonzalez lost her dad this morning from COVID and it breaks my heart. We need to keep them in our prayers. And she has a good friend, Mrs. Uh, Gutierrez, that we need to keep in our prayers that has it in the hospital. And we also need to lift up Jimbo. He's in the hospital waiting for open heart surgery. And I tell you, it's hard whenever one of us guys gets put in a cage like that to, to smile all the time. So let's keep him in our prayers. He's doing a great job. I'm excited that he's where he's at because God just spared his life. I, I praise God for that. He's where he needs to be, and he's going to get healed through this surgery, and man, it's going to be good. I can't wait to see what Jimbo's going to think. He's a new man. And we also need to keep Heather and all the girls and their families and their grandkids in your prayers because they miss Grandpa, they miss they miss their dad, and they miss their their wife or husband. And I, let's just keep all of them in our prayers and keep lifting them up. There's others in our church. I, there's unspoken requests out there that God knows who needs prayers. If it, you know, we men and these just lift up. We say, God, whoever it is in our church that that needs prayers, we lift them to you. And I, God hears those prayers. He hears those prayers. And there's nothing greater than that. So as I end here this morning, I want to pray with you again. Father God, we just come before you again this morning and we thank you for your word. We thank you for the scripture that you put in the Bible, Father God, that we have a book that we can follow. Father God, that we can cherish and we can live our life in and around and about and, and of, Father God. And I just ask that everyone listening out there this morning, that if that if they're not where they need to be, they'll get there, Father God. I pray they do understand like what Chance said or Lance said last week, that whether you are you have a lot to offer God or whether you're just a torn up raven, Father God, that they can come to you still and they can have mercy and grace showed upon them and they can be forgiven, Father God. And I ask you to, to touch lives out there that's listening. Let them know, Father God, that they are special. And all those in the world today, all of us are going through so much darkness. I ask, Father God, to, to protect everyone, keep them safe and healthy, Father God. And I ask you to anoint every home that's listening today and in our church, Father God, anoint it that the, the the fullness of Jesus Christ, the love and the joy and the peace and the comfort will just engulf their homes, Father God. Not just today, but every day of their life, Father God, and that, that, that they will seek you with all they are, Father. That their ground will be fertile and good ground, Father. Father, I lift up all the children out there listening. I miss all those kills. They are so dear to me and Denise and I can't wait to see them and hug their neck, Father God. Let them know they're special. Let them know we love them, Father God, and we're here for them. We just thank you, Father God, for this thing called the church that you started, Ecclesia, Father God. We thank you for Valencia County Cowboy Church and, and for bringing us all here together, and we're excited for our future. May we seek you. We're excited for that new arena, Father God, or to get the, the portable arena up there, Father God. Help us to start being able to do that, Father, to get things going up there and have a place for God's people to come and, and the world around us that's lost to be able to come and experience you, Father God, through us. We give you the glory. We thank you. We praise you. We're excited for next Sunday, Father God, and we just give you the glory for our life today and another day to come worship you. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. Thank you, Father God. Until we meet again. I pray that God moves in a mighty way in your life and that you experience the joy that that little baby brought. And his name was Jesus. The joy that he brings that we can live life today and not worry about anything but him. In Jesus' name, amen. Adios.